In mathematics, in particular in algebraic topology, differential geometry and algebraic geometry, the Chern classes are characteristic classes associated with complex vector bundles. Chern classes were introduced by Xing Shen Chern. Geometric approach, basic idea and motivation Chern classes are characteristic classes. They are topological invariants associated with vector bundles on a smooth manifold. The question of whether two ostensibly different vector bundles are the same can be quite hard to answer. The Chern classes provide a simple test. If the Chern classes of a pair of vector bundles do not agree, then the vector bundles are different. The converse, however, is not true. In topology, differential geometry, and algebraic geometry, it is often important to count how many linearly independent sections a vector bundle has. The Chern classes offer some information about this through, for instance, the Riemann-Roch theorem and the Utia-Singer index theorem. Chern classes are also feasible to calculate in practice. In differential geometry, the Chern classes can be expressed as polynomials in the coefficients of the curvature form. The original approach to Chern classes was via algebraic topology. The Chern classes arise via homotopy theory which provides a mapping associated with V to a classifying space. For any vector bundle V over a manifold M, there exists a mapping F from M to the classifying space such that the bundle V is equal to the pullback by F of a universal bundle over the classifying space, and the Chern classes of V can therefore be defined as the pullback of the Chern classes of the universal bundle. These universal Chern classes in turn can be explicitly written down in terms of Schubert cycles. It can be shown that for any two maps F, G from M to the classifying space whose pullbacks are the same bundle V, the maps must be homotopic. Therefore, the pullback by either F or G of any universal Chern class to a cohomology class of M must be the same class. This shows that the Chern classes of E are well defined. Chern's approach used differential geometry via the curvature approach described predominantly in this article. He showed that the earlier definition was in fact equivalent to his. The resulting theory is known as the chern weil theory. There is also an approach of Alexander Groth and Dieck showing that axiomatically one need only define the line bundle case. Chern classes arise naturally in algebraic geometry. The generalized Chern classes in algebraic geometry can be defined for vector bundles over any non-singular variety. Algebra-geometric Chern classes do not require the underlying field to have any special properties. In particular, the vector bundles need not necessarily be complex. Regardless of the particular paradigm, the intuitive meaning of the Chern class concerns required zeros of a section of a vector bundle. For example, the theorem saying one can't comb a hairy ball flat. Although that is strictly speaking a question about a real vector bundle, there are generalizations in which the hairs are complex or for one-dimensional projective spaces over many other fields. See Chern Simons for more discussion. The Chern class of line bundles. An important special case occurs when V is a line bundle. Then the only non-trivial Chern class is the first Chern class, which is an element of the second cohomology group of X. As it is the top Chern class, it equals the Euler class of the bundle. The first Chern class turns out to be a complete invariant with which to classify complex line bundles, topologically speaking. That is, there is a bijection between the isomorphism classes of line bundles over X and the elements of H2, which associates to a line bundle its first Chern class. Moreover, this bijection is a group homomorphism. The tensor product of complex line bundles corresponds to the addition in the second cohomology group. In algebraic geometry, this classification of complex line bundles by the first Chern class is a crude approximation to the classification of holomorphic line bundles by linear equivalence classes of devices. For complex vector bundles of dimension greater than 1, the Chern classes are not a complete invariant. Constructions 
via the Chern-Weil theory given a complex Hermitian vector bundle V of complex rank N over a smooth manifold M. A representative of each Chern class CK of V given as the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial of the curvature form omega of V. The determinant is over the ring of N times N matrices whose entries are polynomials in T with coefficients in the commutative algebra of even complex differential forms on M. The curvature form omega of V is defined as with omega the connection form and D the exterior derivative, or via the same expression in which omega is a gauge form for the gauge group of V. The scalar T is used here only as an indeterminate to generate the sum from the determinant, and I denotes the N times N identity matrix. To say that the expression given is a representative of the Chern class indicates that class here means up to addition of an exact differential form. That is, Chern classes are cohomology classes in the sense of de RHAM cohomology. It can be shown that the cohomology class of the Chern forms do not depend on the choice of connection in V. Using the matrix identity TR equals lane and the Maclaurin series for lane. This expression for the Chern form expands as via an Euler class one can define a Chern class in terms of an Euler class. This is the approach in the book by Milnor and Stash F, and emphasizes the role of an orientation of a vector bundle. The basic observation is that a complex vector bundle comes with a canonical orientation, ultimately because is connected. Hence, one simply defines the top churn class of the bundle to be its Euler class and handles lower churn classes in an inductive fashion. The precise construction is as follows. The idea is to do base change to get a bundle of one less rank. Let pi e b be a complex vector bundle over a paracompact space b. Thinking b is embedded into e as zero section. Let and define the new vector bundle such that each fiber is the quotient of a fiber f of e by the line spanned by a non-zero vector v in f then e has rank 1 less than that of e. From the Gizine sequence for the fiber bundle, we see that is an isomorphism for chi less than 2n1. Let it then take some work to check the axioms of turn classes are satisfied for this definition. See also the Tom isomorphism. Examples the complex tangent bundle of the Riemann sphere let CPE1 be the Riemann sphere, one-dimensional complex projective space. Suppose that Z is a holomorphic local coordinate for the Riemann sphere, let V equals TCP1 be the bundle of complex tangent vectors having the form A, Z at each point, where A is a complex number. We prove the complex version of the hairy ball theorem. V has no section which is everywhere non-zero. For this, we need the following fact. The first churn class of a trivial bundle is zero, i.e., this is evinced by the fact that a trivial bundle always admits a flat connection. So, we shall show that consider the Kahler metric 1 readily shows that the curvature 2 form is given by furthermore. By the definition of the first Chern class we must show that this cohomology class is non-zero. It suffices to compute its integral over the Riemann sphere. After switching to polar coordinates, by Stokes' theorem, an exact form would integrate to zero, so the cohomology class is non-zero. This proves that TCP1 is not a trivial vector bundle. Complex projective space there is an exact sequence of sheaves bundles, whereas the structure or sheaf is series twisting sheaf and the last non-zero term is the tangent sheaf bundle. There are two ways to get the above sequence. Let Z0, zinc be the coordinates of and, then we have, in other words, the cotangent sheaf, which is a free module with the basis, fits into the exact sequence where are the basis of the middle term. The same sequence is clearly then exact on the whole projective space and the dual of it is the aforementioned sequence. Let L be a line in that passes through the origin. It is elementary to see that the complex tangent space to at the point L is naturally the set of linear maps from L to its complement. Thus, the tangent bundle can be identified with the HOM bundle where eta is the vector bundle such that it follows.
by the additivity of total churn class C equals 1 plus C1 plus C2 plus, where A is the canonical generator of the cohomology group, i.e., the negative of the first churn class of the tautological line bundle in particular, for any k0, churn polynomial. A churn polynomial is a convenient way to handle churn classes and related notions systematically. By definition, for a complex vector bundle E, the churn polynomial quarter V is given by. This is not a new invariant. The formal variable T simply keeps track of the degree of CK. In particular, is completely determined by the total churn class of E, and conversely. The Whitney sum formula, one of the axioms of churn classes, says that court is additive in the sense. Now, if is a direct sum of line bundles, then it follows from the sum formula that, where are the first churn classes? The roots, called the churn roots of E, determine the coefficients of the polynomial, i.e., where sigma k are elementary symmetric polynomials. In other words, thinking of I as formal variables, ck, r, sigma k. A basic fact on symmetric polynomials is that any symmetric polynomial in, say, t's is a polynomial in elementary symmetric polynomials in t's, either by splitting principle or by ring theory. Any churn polynomial factorizes into linear factors after enlarging the cohomology ring, e need not be a direct sum of line bundles in the preceding discussion. The conclusion is, one can evaluate any symmetric polynomial f at a complex vector bundle e by writing f as a polynomial in sigma k and then replacing sigma k by ck. Example, we have polynomials s, k with and so on. The sum is called the churn character of E, whose first few terms are. Example, the Todd class of E is given by. Remark, the observation that a churn class is essentially an elementary symmetric polynomial can be used to define churn classes. Let Gn be the infinite Grassmannian of n-dimensional complex vector spaces. It is a classifying space in the sense that, given a complex vector bundle e of rank n over x, there is a continuous map unique up to homotopy. Borel's theorem says the cohomology ring of Gn is exactly the ring of symmetric polynomials, which are polynomials in elementary symmetric polynomials sigma k. So, the pullback of Fe reads, one then puts, remark, any characteristic class is a polynomial in churn classes, for the reason as follows. Let be the contravariant functor that, to a CW complex X, assigns the set of isomorphism classes of complex vector bundles of rank n over X and, to a map, its pullback. By definition, a characteristic class is a natural transformation from to the cohomology functor characteristic classes form a ring because of the ring structure of cohomology ring. Yonida's lemma says this ring of characteristic classes is exactly the cohomology ring of Gn. Properties of Chern classes Given a complex vector bundle E over a topological space X, the churn classes of E are a sequence of elements of the cohomology of X. The Kth churn class of E, which is usually denoted CK, is an element of H2K, the cohomology of X with integer coefficients. One can also define the total churn class since the values are in integral cohomology groups, rather than cohomology with real coefficients. These churn classes are slightly more refined than those in the Riemannian example. Classical axiomatic definition The churn classes satisfy the following four axioms. Axiom 1. For all E. Axiom 2. Naturality. If is continuous and F asterisk E is the vector bundle pullback of E, then. Axiom 3. Whitney sum formula. If is another complex vector bundle, then the churn classes of the direct sum are given by that is. Axiom 4. Normalization. The total churn class of the tautological line bundle over CPK is 1 minus H, where H is Poincare dual to the hyperplane. Alexander Groth and Eek axiomatic approach alternatively. Alexander Groth and Eek replace these with a slightly smaller set of axioms. 
naturality, additivity. If is an exact sequence of vector bundles, then normalization. If E is a line bundle, then where is the Euler class of the underlying real vector bundle? He shows using the Leray Hirsch theorem that the total Chern class of an arbitrary finite rank complex vector bundle can be defined in terms of the first Chern class of a tautologically defined line bundle, namely, introducing the projectivization P of the rank N complex vector bundle EB as the fiber bundle on B whose fiber at any point is the projective space of the fiber EB. The total space of this bundle P is equipped with its tautological complex line bundle that we denote Tau, and the first Chern class restricts on each fiber P to minus the class of the hyperplane that spans the cohomology of the fiber. In view of the cohomology of complex projective spaces, the classes therefore form a family of ambient cohomology classes restricting to a basis of the cohomology of the fiber. The Leray Hirsch theorem then states that any class in H can be written uniquely as a linear combination of the 1, A, A2, and minus 1 with classes on the basis of coefficients. In particular, one may define the churn classes of E in the sense of Groth and Eek, denoted by expanding this way the class with the relation. One then may check that this alternative definition coincides with whatever other definition one may favor, or use the previous axiomatic characterization. The top churn class in fact, these properties uniquely characterize the churn classes. They imply, among other things, if n is the complex rank of E, then for all k greater than n, thus the total churn class terminates. The top churn class of E is always equal to the Euler class of the underlying real vector bundle. Proximate notions The churn character churn classes can be used to construct a homomorphism of rings from the topological k-theory of a space to its rational cohomology. For a line bundle L, the churn character CH is defined by more generally, if is a direct sum of line bundles. With first churn classes the churn character is defined additively this can be rewritten as this last expression, justified by invoking the splitting principle, is taken as the definition CH for arbitrary vector bundles V. If a connection is used to define the churn classes when the bases are manifold, then the explicit form of the churn character is where omega is the curvature of the connection. The churn character is useful in part because it facilitates the computation of the churn class of a tensor product. Specifically, it obeys the following identities. As stated above, using the Groth and Dieck additivity axiom for churn classes, the first of these identities can be generalized to state that CH is a homomorphism of abelian groups from the K-theory K and the rational cohomology of X. The second identity establishes the fact that this homomorphism also respects products in K, and so CH is a homomorphism of rings. The Chern character is used in the herzebruck riemann rock theorem. Chern numbers if we work on an oriented manifold of dimension 2n, then any product of Chern classes of total degree 2n can be paired with the orientation homology class to give an integer, a Chern number of the vector bundle. For example, if the manifold has dimension 6, there are three linearly independent churn numbers, given by C13, C1, C2, and C3. In general, if the manifold has dimension 2n, the number of possible independent churn numbers is the number of partitions of n. The churn numbers of the tangent bundle of a complex manifold are called the churn numbers of the manifold, and are important invariants. The Chern class in generalized cohomology theories there is a generalization of the theory of Chern classes, where ordinary cohomology is replaced with a generalized cohomology theory. The theories for which such generalization is possible are called complex orientable. The formal properties of the Chern classes remain the same, with one crucial difference. 
the rule which computes the first churn class of a tensor product of line bundles in terms of first churn classes of the factors is not addition, but rather a formal group law. Churn classes of manifolds with structure The theory of churn classes gives rise to cobordism and variance for almost complex manifolds. If M is an almost complex manifold, then its tangent bundle is a complex vector bundle. The churn classes of M are thus defined to be the churn classes of its tangent bundle. If M is also compact and of dimension 2D, then each monomial of total degree 2D in the churn classes can be paired with the fundamental class of M, giving an integer, a churn number of M. If M is another almost complex manifold of the same dimension, then it is cobordant to M if and only if the churn numbers of M coincide with those of M. The theory also extends to real symplectic vector bundles by the intermediation of compatible almost complex structures. In particular, symplectic manifolds have a well-defined churn class.